Okay then gang, so the next thing I'd like to do is add a little search bar just below the filter buttons where a user can type into the input to search for codex entries and then we'll only show codex entries that match what a user types into the browser. So the first thing we'll do then is make the input below the filter buttons but still inside this little if block because again we only want to show this if the content was fetched for the interactive dashboard and it uses HTML to do that. So let's make a div with a class of mb-6, which is a tailwind class to add margin to the bottom. And inside this div, we need an input tag. So let's make that as well. And then on this input tag, we're going to have a few different attributes. The first one is going to be the type attribute, and that's just going to be text. The second one will be a placeholder. And the value of that can be something like, I don't know, search codex entries dot dot dot. And then the third one is going to be a class so that we can add some Tailwind classes again. And they are going to be P-2 for some padding, border, to give it a border, rounded for the round corners, and W-full to make it full width of this section. All right, so now we want to make some more state, which keeps track of what a user types into this. And we can register that state on the codex store we made in the last lesson. So let's open the outline page and we're going to go to that store. And then we can just add another property down here, which we'll call search. And the initial value should be an empty string. Okay, so now how do we make it so that when a user types into the input field, we update this bit of state to be whatever the value is inside the input? Well, we can use the x hyphen model directive and that sets up data binding between the input element and the state. So that when the value updates in the input field, it automatically updates the state in the store to match it. So let's come to that input field and add on the x hyphen model directive. And we're gonna set that equal to whatever the state property was called, which was search. Okay, cool. So now we're tracking what are user types into this search bar and we're storing that value in the store, right? So now we need a way to use that search value to conditionally show only codex entries which match what are user types. So if they type RE in the search bar, for example, then we only want to show codex entries that contain those two consecutive letters. Now we're going to do this by using the x hyphen show attribute again to only show individual entries. If there's a match, then we show it. If there's not, then we're not going to show it. So let's come to the template where we output the codex entries and it's inside this for each loop right here that we want to show each entry or that we do show each entry, right? So each li tag contains an entry and it's these things we want to conditionally show. So let's add the x hyphen show attribute to this li tag and we're going to set it equal to something. Now, the logic we want to run here is to essentially check if the entry name contains the search term in any part of it. But we also need to convert the term and the entry name to lowercase first and strip out any white space as well. So we could add all of that match logic right here in line, but because it's a little bit more complex than a single short line of code, I prefer to add a logic to the store and then invoke that logic right here for each item. So let's go back to the store and I'm going to register a function in the store called matches. And we can do that in Alpine. We can have states as well as functions inside them. Anyway, this function should take an argument, which is going to be the entry name that we're looking for matches against. We're just going to call the argument name. Then inside this function, we'll make a constant called term and set that equal to this dot search to access the current value of the search state. So whatever a user's typed into the import, and then we'll use the trim method on that to trim off any white space. And then we're going to use the to lowercase method to convert the search value to be lowercase. Okay, so now we've got a lowercase search term with no white space, and we want to see if that term is included in the name of the argument that we take in. If it is, we'll return true from this function. If not, we'll return false. We also need to return true if the search term is an empty string, because if that's the case, then the user hasn't searched for anything. And we want to return true in that case so that we show everything. So let's say return, and then term is triple equal to an empty string, first of all, or, so double pipes, name, which is the argument we take in, dot two lowercase, and then we're going to use the includes method on that to see if it includes the term that we have. And now, if either one of these conditions are true, this matches method is going to return true. So we need to reference this function then for each codex entry name when we output it in the browser. So right here where we have x hyphen show, I'm going to reference it by saying dollar sign store dot codex, which is the name of the store, and then invoking this matches function 
and passing in the current entry name inside a string. So we need to output those in curly braces. We say dollar sign entry, which we have access to right here. That's what we're looping through the codex entries. And then we just want to pass in the name field of that entry. So hopefully this makes sense because this function is going to return either true or false right here. And that's what XShow expects, either something true or something false. It returns true if there's matches, and therefore this li tag will show in the browser. It returns false if there's no matches, and therefore it won't show in the browser. So then let's save it and give it a whirl. All right, so I'm gonna start typing something up here, T, yeah, and we just see everything with a T in it now. TH, yeah, and we just see these two, TH, E, O, and we just see this one, awesome. Now there is just one tiny problem, at least in my view, with how this works. And that is if we add some kind of new entry or delete an entry, I personally think we should reset the search term back to an empty string. So we're gonna fix that in the next lesson.